Okay, today we're going to do a demonstration of Simcoe Ion's IQ Easy neutralizing static bar, sensor bar, and manager on the Simcoe Ion Industrial Dynamic Test System. The dynamic test system uh, allows us to evaluate the performance of neutralizing bars, and in this case, our sensor bar. Um, uh, by allowing us to charge material, neutralize the charge, and then, in effect, determine how well we've neutralized the charge. Starting from the bottom of the piece of equipment, we have a charging bar, which um, allows us to, to apply charge to the material. This is the charging bar. The charging bar is supplied through an MCM30 power supply and it allows us to charge the material to up to, up to 50,000 volts. Downstream from that we have a modified FMX meter which allows us to measure the applied charge to the material and we actually control the charge level with that reading. The next uh, element that the web passes by is uh, the IQ Easy neutralizing bar. And then downstream from that, we have an additional FMX meter and the IQ Easy sensor bar, which can be used to measure how well the material is neutralized. And in the case of the IQ Easy system, we can use the sensor bar for closed loop feedback. The dynamic test system is controlled through a PLC, and the uh, interface for the PLC is this screen here. It allows us to set the web speed in thousands of feet per minute, which is 2,000 feet per minute right now. We can set the charge level, which is 50,000 volts, and we can set the polarity of the charge. So we have positive 50,000 volts on the web. You can see that our upstream sensor is reading 51,000 volts, so we're making that 50,000 volts on the upstream sensor, which again is in this location. So at this point on the material, we have 50,000 volts. Um, <clears throat> as we uh, go downstream sensor, which is downstream from the uh, neutralizing bar, on this sensor, we can see how well the material has been neutralized. And in this case, we're taking 50,000 volts down to uh, 115 volts, which is essentially zero in, in this type of application. So, this just uh, gives you a basic layout of the system and the controls on it. Now we're going to take a closer look at the IQ Easy bar, the IQ Easy sensor bar, and um, evaluate some different modes of operation. I've established some test conditions on the dynamic test stand that will let us evaluate the, the auto tune. The fixed, the auto tune, and the closed loop feedback modes of the IQ Easy system. You'll notice that upstream from the neutralizing bar, I have negative 50,000 volts established. I'm running my web at 2,000 feet per minute, and we'll use this downstream reading to evaluate how well each mode of operation is performing. Right now, the system has the neutralizing bar configured in the fixed mode. As you know, in the fixed mode, the positive and negative high voltage power supplies are run at this roughly the same voltage. Um, and the result is quite good in that mode. We're seeing that the net downstream charge from the neutralizing bar is about 5% of the upstream charge. Let's see if using our patented auto-tune feature, we can make an improvement on that. First, we select the mode and we edit that mode to uh, auto-tune, so we see that we've updated that. The auto-tune mode will utilize the differential in the neutralizing currents to determine how to change the output of the bar to further reduce the web charge. We see now we have negative 50,000 volts on our upstream sensor, and this number here has been reduced to uh, less than half of what it was before. Before we had about 2,500 volts, now we're down to about 1,000 volts. As this runs, that number will actually continue to reduce. So now you can see that we're down under 1,000 volts. So this is really uh, 
excellent performance with the auto-tune mode. For users that require even more uh, detailed static elimination, we offer the closed-loop feedback mode. And of course, in this mode, we're combining the IQ Easy sensor bar and the IQ Easy neutralizing bar into a closed loop feedback mode where the sensor bar steers the output of the neutralizing bar. So again, we go into the neutralizing bar mode and instead of auto tune, this time we'll pick closed loop feedback. Okay, in, in the closed loop feedback mode, data from the sensor bar will be transmitted to the neutralizing bar which allows the static neutralization to be optimized based on the sensor reading. This, this takes a little while for the sensor reading to dial in. To evaluate the performance of the neutralizing bar in the closed loop feedback mode, we can return to the home screen of the manager and then take a look at the data that's provided by the sensor bar. As the sensor bar runs, we should see this number here, which is our overall average and feedback average, we should see that number drive its way down to zero. And it's normal for this to, to take a little bit of time. We don't uh, respond exceedingly fast um, uh, in, in our closed loop feedback loop. But you can clearly see that this number is getting closer and closer to zero, which is what we want. Simultaneously with that, our uh, independent FMX monitor, which is shown on our PLC screen, is also reading uh, very, very close to zero now, uh, within a, a couple hundred volts of zero. If we return back down to the manager screen, we can see now we're within 400 volts of zero, and that should continue to improve as the system runs. Okay, we can see now that as we run, the uh, closed loop feedback system responds, and now this, this metric here, which is our, our closed loop feedback average, these numbers are zero now. So that shows that the web has been completely neutralized to the best of the ability of the sensor bar in closed loop feedback with the neutralizing bar. The, the charging equipment that we use uh, is a pinner bar, which you guys are familiar with, and an MCM30. Um, with this combination, we're actually able to achieve web charges of 50,000 volts. One of the questions that we get is, how can we, with a 30 kV power supply, wind up with a web charge of 50,000 volts? You'll notice that we're actually uh, proximate to this grounded roller here. So when we charge the material, it's actually pinned to this roller and then stripped off. So we're utilizing kind of like a triboelectric effect which boosts the, the total charge on the web. If we move uh, downstream from that, you know, again, we have our FMX meter. This is uh, a specially modified unit. We uh, kind of reverse engineered the circuit and added some components there uh, to give us an analog output that we're able to read on our PLC. Downstream from the FMX is the IQ Easy Bar, and we have that in kind of an optimized location, which is four inches from the web. Um, <clears throat> downstream from that, we have another FMX and our IQ Easy sensor bar. One of the questions that we get is where, um, relative to the IQ Easy neutralizing bar, should the sensor bar be located? It should be at least 12 inches downstream. The IQ Easy neutralizing bar should be located upstream from the sensor bar. This allows the sensor bar to send data to the neutralizing bar to correct for web charge. For typical installations, the sensor bar should be at least 12 inches downstream from the neutralizing bar. The mounting distance uh, from the web to the bar or from the web to the sensor is optimal at four inches, but the uh, software in both devices allows for flexible mounting options. In the case of the sensor, it can be mounted at two, three, four, six, and 10 inches away from the target. Of course, we would prefer that um, the installation be at a standard distance of four inches. 
The IQ Easy sensor bar and the IQ Easy neutralizing bar both connect back to the IQ Easy manager by uh, M12 standard cable connections. So these are a, a standard industrial type of cable that's available. Um, they're provided with the sensor bar or the neutralizing bar. This is the connection panel on the IQ Easy Manager. You can see that the bar and sensor plug into one of the six available device ports. The IQ Easy Manager is not a system that requires addressing of the devices. Um, you can see that we have the static bar installed on port two and the neutralizing bar installed on port five. And those locations show up on the screen in locations one, two, and five. So if we moved one of the devices to a different port, it would simply show up in that slot. So un unlike other systems, no addressing of devices is required for this system.